Lately, I've heard so much discussion on the topic of homeschooling. Maybe you're a parent who is considering homeschooling and you're wondering about where to begin. I've homeschooled since 2014, and I've learned some lessons along the way, and I thought I'd just share a few of them with you in the hopes that it can keep you from getting so overwhelmed. All right, here we go. Number one, begin with the end in mind. So even if you are starting with a kindergartner in homeschooling, think about what will it look like when my child graduates high school? Because that's what you're preparing them for in your educational journey, right? What do you want them to be able to know and do? That will help guide some of your decisions along the way that you make in planning activities and making curriculum choices. But one thing every parent needs to ask every year is, by the end of the school year, what do I want my child to be able to know and do? And having a simple list of five to 10 things that can be academic, social, behavioral, um, or even physical in nature, things that you want them to be able to know and do by the end of the school year. Keep a list, could be in your phone, it could be on a calendar or in a planner, but if you regularly see that list, you're regularly asking yourself, okay, where am I in reaching the end? Where am I in reaching this goal? And do I need to make any adjustments? Or I, I really need to buckle down if I'm going to reach this goal by the end of the school year. So keep it simple. Tip number two is to choose a starting point and then be prepared to adapt. You may never find the perfect curriculum for you and your child. I'm always making changes to our plan as we go along, finding ideas that I can supplement with. It's important in the beginning to just choose something, make it simple. If you find ideas you wanna add to later, you can do that. Uh, just try not to become too overwhelmed because if you're speaking to someone who's been doing this a long time, they're so excited about it, they may flood you with ideas and you just may not be able to try all of those your first year. You're going to learn a lot about yourself as a teacher. You're going to learn about a lot about you and your child's dynamic together at home. And you're going to learn a lot about your child's own specific learning style. As you get out and about and meet other homeschool families, they're going to make recommendations to you, and you could try some of those this school year, but just don't overwhelm yourself. Know that you can always jot that idea down and have it be something that you look at for the next school year. The third tip that I would like to share with you is to connect online. And I know that some parents aren't huge fans of some of the social media websites, but I will tell you, I do not know what my homeschooling experience would have looked like these past several years without having social media. So the app that I use the most has definitely been Facebook, mainly for its ability to join specific groups. So my first year of homeschooling, I made sure to join a local group specific for my town of homeschoolers. And from there, I was able to meet moms who had children the same age who were starting kindergarten. And we met up one day, you know, you just meet up at a park or library, make a date to meet up and see if you kind of work well together. We formed a co-op, which meant that we met, we met together each week, helping each other out, had a little read aloud book, took turns teaching and had a small craft with our children. And it gave them something fun to look forward to. Um, lots of great picture opportunities to have with our children and friends to meet. Um, during the school year to share these experiences with. So Facebook came in handy for that, for just meeting people when you're starting out. But it's also come in handy to be a member of certain groups like groups for parents who have a dyslexic child, groups for parents who have an ADHD child, uh, groups that are specific to whatever curriculum you're using. You can get lots of ideas from other people. It lets you know that you are not the only parent who is going through this. So when you have a hard day, there's usually someone else out there able to reach out and say, it's okay. Maybe you need to put things down and just have a calmer day today. Tomorrow's a new day. You can always start fresh. So I've really used Facebook quite frequently for keeping in touch with other homeschool parents. Two other apps that I've used 
have been Instagram and Pinterest. And those are primarily because they're just so visual. I can easily scroll through and see some cute and interesting ideas to try with my child. And I can just save them for later and say, oh, yes, I think I want to do a, do that experiment later on, you know, when I do a weather unit. Or I think I want to do this craft later when I'm doing this history unit. So I get a lot of inspiration from those and I get a lot of connection from the Facebook app. The fourth tip that I have is to make a way to conveniently homeschool for your household. You need to understand that this is so specific to each household. It depends on the ages of the children. It depends on parent personalities, children's personalities, and the parent's work schedule even. Did you know that some parents homeschool while they have a full-time job or even a part-time job? Some parents choose a homeschool program that is completely online, where they have online teachers to grade the assignments, um, to schedule the assignments and tests as well. Some homeschool parents, they are just so with it. Money is no object. They have all their curriculum bought um, so far in advance. Their children are super compliant. I'm always in amazement of those. And <laughs> they're able to get school done by lunch pretty much every single day. Other parents, they've got to make use of that time that their younger children are playing quietly or having a nap. And that's their time to sit and do more difficult assignments with their oldest child. And then there are some homeschool families that are able to have all the children sit around a table together. It's just so dependent on all of those things I said before, but also on your phase of life. I can remember the year that I had my third baby and my oldest child was in first grade. So he'd already had one year of homeschooling where we met regularly with other people. But there came a year where, you know, I had a lot going on and we just tried to stay home a little bit more often that year and make up the fun in other ways. So don't be too hard on yourself if your homeschooling year doesn't look exactly like your friends because it's so specific. You're not going to try to recreate a traditional school day. No one I know homeschools for eight hours a day. It's just not necessary. So remember what I said in the beginning about making your goals and looking at that. It's usually not necessary to have eight full hours a day of schooling with your child. The fifth tip that I'd like to share with you is to stay up to date with your state's homeschooling requirements. Most of these can easily be found on your state website in the education section. There might also be a search bar where you can type in homeschooling and find out more information about what your state actually requires. Your local school system will also have information for you if you are needing to withdraw a certain child from the school system. They can help you out in that area. But I'd like for you to look into the HSLDA website. That stands for Homeschool Legal Defense Association. If you go to their website, and I'll include it in the description below, they have a clickable map of the United States of America. Just choose your state, and it will tell you which states are a little bit more strict on their requirements, which ones are a little bit more lenient, and they're available there to help you. If you become a member, you'll even get some additional benefits from that. Parents, I hope that you enjoy this homeschooling journey. There will be rough days, just like there are rough days in parenting, but there will also be some rewarding days as well. And just because you're homeschooling now does not mean you will be homeschooling forever. I have plenty of homeschooling friends who have left and gone on to traditional school. I have friends who have some children who are in a traditional school setting while another child is being homeschooled at home. It changes every year for every family. We are so blessed that we live in a country where we, the parents, get to choose how we educate our children. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please share with a friend and don't forget to like and subscribe. You can check out the parentteacherbridge.com slash reading help to get my free guide, five quick tips to immediately help your struggling reader. If you have a question that you would like to see answered with my Mailbag Monday, just leave it in the comment section below. Remember, you are your child's most influential teacher.